Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. Starring Richard Crane in Beyond the Curtain of Space, Chapter One. Let's take a look, huh? And we've walked millions of miles this trip, and that calls for time off. XB2 calling Office of Space Affairs. Come in, please. This is the XB2 calling Office of Space Affairs. Come in. Come in, XB2. State Celestial Position. This is Rocky Jones of the Space Rangers reporting. Celestial Meridian, 58 degrees, parallel 146 degrees. We're now in second breaking ellipse of Earth, requesting landing clearance at approximately 1600. You're dead center on Baker flight path, Rocky. Right in, we're all clear and waiting for you. Well, hold it. Here's Secretary Drake, sir. Welcome home, Rocky. Thank you, sir. I'm certainly glad to be back. Was it a rough trip? More or less routine, sir. Uh, much more, more than less, less, Mr. Secretary. Believe me. <laughs> I can believe you, Winky. Come in the office when you land, boys. I'll have your leave papers ready. Oh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, sir. Out. Alert to ground crew. Alert to ground crew. Now learn this. XV-2 on Baker flight path. Now at 85,000. Prepare for landing. just drove through number three gate without stopping for identification. Okay, lock her up in the barn, boys. Hey, what about the seashore, Rocky? I know a place called Paradise Isle. Balmy nights and soft music under a big tropical moon. White sands washed by an emerald sea. How's it sound? Let's see what Drake has to say about that, huh? But he's already said it. Leave papers. Look out, Wendy. Hey, you know something? It's safer up there. But, uh, who wants to be up there? Come on, Skipper. Do you know you're a trespasser? On any foot of that mountain road, you could have been destroyed. Yes, yes, Mr. Secretary, but I had to take the chance. What's your name? Vina Ray. And your reason for being here? Professor Newton. I have no interest in anything that concerns the professor. I know, I know. You believe he's a traitor to the United Worlds of the Solar System. Yes, his own words prove it. But, Mr. Secretary, during our exchange of scientists with the officious group, I was an interpreter. When the rest of us left, I shook hands with the professor. His eyes tried to tell me something. He gave me this. To Professor Newton from Secretary Drake, with profound gratitude and eternal friendship. But Mr. Secretary, why did he leave the medal in my hand? He must have wanted me to bring it to you. I don't know. Professor Newton recorded his decision on film. The officians left it at our outpost on Cecinus to be delivered to me. It is proof positive. Griff, project the Newton Declaration. Yes, sir. One moment, please. Mission complete and job well done, boys. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And now I have new orders. <laughs> Here are your leave papers. Relax. Oh. <laughs> Stretch out and watch the stars as something beautiful and mysterious, not as places you've been to make friends or to fight our enemies. Report back on the 20th. Hey, Rocky, two months leave. How about that? Ready with the Newton Declaration, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Griff. Enjoy your time off, boys. You've earned it. Thank you, sir. 
Come on, Skipper, let's not waste a second of that two months. Paradise Island, here we come. Wait a minute, Winky. As long as we're here, let's see the Newton Declaration, too, huh? When ready, Griff. Mind if we join you, Mr. Secretary? Please do, Rocky. Secretary Drake, may I first say this? The decision to remain on Officius is mine and mine alone. I have been influenced by neither word nor act. These people are my friends. Perhaps, thinking singularly, I would not have made such a drastic move and severed the ties of a lifetime. But I must consider my young ward, Bobby. A long life stands before him. And not through heritage, but by my choice, he can now share in the triumph and the glory of Ophidius. Come here, Bobby. Newton wanted Bobby to become a space ranger. He said it a thousand times. Mr. Secretary, you have heard my wish, my declaration. Now, Bobby, say goodbye to our friends. Goodbye, Mr. Secretary. And please, sir, say hello to Rocky Jones, to Winky, and to the rest of the Space Rangers. A detailed letter made his breach complete. He surrendered all his property, even the Newton Observatory. I'm sorry, sir, but I just can't believe it. Professor Newton was either drugged or forced to make that declaration by a threat on Bobby's life. That's true, Mr. Secretary. He's their prisoner. With your permission, sir, I'd like to find out. Hey, Rocky. Oh, well. Another day, another moon, maybe. Officious. As you know, Rocky, they asked us to close our embassy. You won't be welcome either. Yes, I understand, sir. But it could happen that we were lost in space and forced to land, couldn't it? I'm sure they're not prepared to invite open warfare by imprisoning a couple of space rangers. Yeah, but they will be soon with Professor Newton on their side, huh, Rocky? It's a gamble, but worth the chance, sir. Release Professor Newton prisoner. Rocky Jones may attempt rescue flight. We'll get it through, Grip. Any further orders? Stand by. If rescue flight is attempted by Rocky Jones, we'll inform you of blast off time and refuel station. We're to destroy his orbit jet before it reaches your zone. And the blame placed on you. Out. This is the curtain which separates our League of Planets from the Ophesius group. From that point on, they are able to jam our messages. After you pass that point, you'll be without a communication link. You'll be on your own, Rocky. It'll be dangerous. I understand, sir. We'll make it, though. Now, where will our refuel station be? That's up to you. May I suggest space station RV-5? That's stretching the first hop, and there's very little traffic there. Right. And in the interest of secrecy, I'll declare the area out of bounds, except to commercial craft. Now, for your crew. Well, so that those on the other planet can't claim invasion, Winky and I should go it alone. We'll disable our ship, land, search for Professor Newton and Bobby, and try to bring them back with us. Please, Mr. Secretary. Can't I go? It's out of the question. Why? Would that make it an invasion? No, but it's not a picnic, either. I don't like picnics. What I mean is, a flight like this is no place for a girl. I'm not a girl. I mean, yes, I am, but I'm not a girl in the way you mean I'm a girl. I'll take care of myself, Rocky Jones. I can be a real help to you. Please, Mr. Secretary, I know these people. I speak their language and I know their country. And for your information, Mr. Rocky Jones, I'm also licensed as a navigator. Miss Ray would be extremely valuable as an interpreter. 
We mustn't pass up any chance to make the mission a success. Planetary conditions will be ideal at 0230. If you'll state my crew, sir, I'll prepare for blastoff. Winky will go, and Vena Ray will be signed on as Auxiliary Space Ranger. Very good, sir. Ranger Ray, prepare to stand inspection at 0200. Very good, sir. Positions on platform. Do your best to bring back Professor Newton, but please, Rocky, no unnecessary chances. Yes, sir, I understand, sir. Well, we wouldn't dare because we have a girl aboard. It isn't that. We don't want to lose any of you, any more than Professor Newton and Bobby. I'm sorry, sir. Move in boarding platform. Switch on blast off synchronizer. Jones blasting off at 0230. Refuse space station is RV-5. Area declared out of bounds, making it ideal for attack without interference. We'll be waiting for him, Griff. Over. Secure for blast off, Vena. Turn off that noise. Gives me the creeps. Say, you've been aboard a spaceship before? Sure, on an interplanetary express. It's about as exciting as a streetcar. The orbit jet is different, believe me. Well, that noise is our blast off synchronizer, and when those two sounds get together, we'll be up there. Really? Uh huh. Uh, there's your navigating table, navigator. Have fun. Before this trip is over, you two will be mighty glad I came along. How's the new crew member, our glamour girl navigator? <laughs> Not a thing to worry about, Rock. I hate to admit it, but she sure knows her stuff. All right, you ready, Winky? Ready, sir. see where it helps having a girl board on a dangerous mission like this. Well, she speaks your Ephesians language, Rocky, and that's what we'll need if we make a successful landing there. I'd rather have an extra pair of fists. Anybody understands that language? Oh, give her a break, Rocky. She's a good kid. Uh, we're entering the exosphere. Switch on artificial gravity. Artificial gravity, sir. Go over to work grabbing Gertie and don't lose your grip. Correct drift point one by point four. One to four, sir.
pardon, sir, but we've entered the exosphere. Oh, really? And may I suggest a drift correction? Point one by point four. Good chart, Vina. Thanks, Winky. Awaiting orders, sir. You're a little late. What should I do, sir? Return to quarters and uh, knit me a sweater. Sorry, sir. I don't know how to knit. But if I did, I'd make you a muffler and maybe tie it real tight around your neck. Sir. Object is approaching from two o'clock. Oh, are you positive or is this merely a woman's intuition? I said and I repeat, there's an object approaching us very rapidly. She was right before Rocky. Quick, Ricky, get Drake on Astrophone. Yes, sir. What can I do, Rocky? Nothing, just stay out of the way. XV2 calling Officer Space Affairs. Come in, Officer Space Affairs. XV2 calling Officer Space Affairs. Come in, Officer Space Affairs. Acknowledge, please. We're under attack. Enemy unknown. XV2 calling Officer Space Affairs. Come in, Officer Space Affairs. We're under attack. Mayday. 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 It's a cold channel, Rocky. All right. We'll make a fight of it. Prepare to return fire. Aye, aye, sir. Please, Rocky, what can I do? Secure in your blast chair. But I... That's an order. And stay there. Sir. I can't nail him if you don't hold course. Ready, Winky? Ready, sir. Approaching target. Steady. Steady, sir. On it, Winky. Fire one. Care of them, whoever it was. Level off for free fall, Ricky, while I check the deck. Aye, aye, sir. You all right, Peter? Yes, but what happened, Rocky? What is it? Guess we were lucky at that. Yeah, I had to seal it off before we were sapped of oxygen. Rocky! Blinky! Oh, Winky, if our luck holds on, we can limp into the space station. Say, call Vina forward. Let's see how she likes being a space ranger now. <laughs> Vina, Rocky says you Vina! Vina! Rocky! What is it? It's Vina. She's sealed in. What? 
I hope we're not too late. The door's jammed, Wiki. I'll have to cut it open. Prepare for shock therapy. Set up the regeneration unit. And Wiki, get off the oxygen helmets. Once I cut through, the ship will be dry of air. Hurry! Fire, sir. Charge Winky. I think she'll be all right. She helped save our lives. We've got to save hers. I'll get us to the space station as soon as possible. Calling space station RV-5. Come in, RV-5. This is the XV-2 calling space station RV-5. Come in, RV-5. RV-5 to XV-2. Glad to hear from you. Rocky, this is Space Ranger Clark. Why am I glad to see you? I've got a crippled ship. If you were landed in more than one piece, I'd certainly be surprised. Hold on. I'll see the magnetic couple will pick you up. We got you, Rocky. Relax and we'll pull you in. Thanks, Clark. Out. Oh, Venus. Gee, I'm glad to see you up and around. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble. Oh, that's all right. Could happen to anyone. Thank you, sir. And I'm going to make up for it and prove that I can be it. Well, that a girl can be it. Venus. Yes, sir. I've been thinking it over. There's an express that stops at the space station, and, well, it might be best if... If I were on it? Yes, sweetie. You see, what's happened so far could be called routine for a space ranger, so... It's really no place for... A... Well, what I mean is it's best if you go back to Earth. Say it. It's no place for a girl. Now listen to me, Rocky Jones. In the first place, I was the one who spotted the enemy ship. Remember? Now look, Vina, don't Go get... ahead, be the referee. Don't count me out. I can say what I think about you in 37 different languages. I'll start with the Martians. You're nothing but a big wallowback. A nephew may call you a... Re Conclusion, Rocky Jones. I meant every single word I said. Uh, you'll never get her on that express to Earth, Rocky. And you know, I've got a feeling that she's going to come in mighty handy when we make that forced landing on Ophetius.
same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger.